Hey everyone, good morning. It's Facebook Live time and it's Tuesday and we are going to talk about Pinterest. So if you've been in this group for a while, you know that the Pinterest webinar was, I think it was over a month ago, um, it was on pre-sale. Okay, then after pre-sale I took it down and now it's back for launch. Launch for three days only, okay, and the link is up above, bit.ly slash THM Pinterest course. And there's a few things that are special during these three days, and I'll go over it in just a moment. But I'm excited to share with you a few different things. One, the real pros and cons to using Pinterest. So they're not like going to be like, there can definitely be some pros, but there's going to be some cons that you definitely should be considering when using Pinterest. Um, so I'm going to go over them, in, in my opinion, because I'm obviously using Pinterest. Say hey down below so I know that the comments are working, by the way. Uh, let me type in hey myself. Okay, say, so, hey, good morning, something, okay? And then I'm going to go over exactly how much traffic I receive from Pinterest, um, sales, money, all that good stuff, okay? Um, considering that I have, I think, started my Pinterest strategy sometime in October, okay? Um, let's see here. And another thing I'm going to go over is the, the products that Pinterest is perfect for. So if you sell these types of products I'm about to mention or market, then it'll be perfect for you to be on Pinterest, if you're not on already, okay? Um, so, good morning, everyone. Perfect comments are working. Hello, hello. Um, I just sent out a tweet uh, for people to join me. So, if you're not on Twitter, by the way, or if you are on Twitter and you're not following me, make sure you do. Dahlia Mastermind is my Twitter handle, and I pretty much only tweet for Facebook Lives when I'm on. Maybe a few other things randomly, okay? Good morning. Um, I am very excited to talk about this today. Because a few people, more than a few people, have asked me over the last few weeks, when is the Pinterest webinar launching again? Because I pre-sold it. I think it was, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like a month and a half ago. Um, but, you know, I got very, very busy, so it's good. And I was, not in, I was unable to launch the Pinterest webinar. Um, it was supposed to be like three weeks ago. I was supposed to launch, but I... I just got busy, and now here we are launching it for three days only. Um, and just to kind of give you a heads up, I know I'll say it again in just a, a little bit, but pretty much the three days is today, tomorrow, Wednesday. After Wednesday, the well, the Pinterest webinar won't be at this price anymore, okay? And it will also um, not be available anymore temporarily. I'll go over that in just a minute as to why and all that detail. And the free um, bonus templates that I offer, which is, you know how you create a pin and stuff? Sometimes you can pin directly from your website. However, I do recommend that depending on what you, what type of pictures you have, you do create a pin template. I also offer a free bundle of templates that you can use. Um, those won't be available after launch, okay? Actually, let me make something, let me do something really quick. I forgot to actually do it. Oh, no, I did do it. I did do it. Um, in the... Um, Pinterest course, if you click on the link, bit.ly slash THM Pinterest course, there is a one-time purchase, and there's a monthly, a three-monthly payment plan situation. So just FYI. Okay. So the price will go up. Now the free bonus templates won't be available, and I'm going to tell you how to win the free coaching session with me. Now FYI, if you're wondering how could the price go up, but then you can take away the course, that makes no sense. Well, after March 22nd, the course will go away, okay? Again, I'll explain to you why in a, in a few. But when it does eventually come back to the market, the price will be higher than, than, than during this launch time, okay? Right now, it's $2.99, and then when it eventually comes back on the market, it'll be $3.49, okay? Did I do that math right? Yes, I did. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go over some really cool stats with you guys. Uh, if you noticed in the Facebook Live, I guess, text up, up above here, the real pros and cons to using Pinterest as a marketing strategy. When I say real pros and cons, I mean like, I'm going to tell you as a Pinterest user myself, as a seller myself, what I find the pros and cons are. And they're legitimately pros and cons. So obviously pros, positives. And then like real cons. Not like the cons that you get like when you go to a job interview and they're like, what is your, what is your weakness? Not one of those like things where you take a negative and make it to a positive. Well, maybe some of them are can be, but nonetheless, there will be some negatives to using Pinterest as a marketing strategy. I'm going to go over both for you, okay? Um, just so you're aware how much traffic, sales, and money I made from Pinterest already and all that good stuff. 
and then again, like I said, the perfect products. Okay. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Hold on. Good morning. So if you could type down below in the comments. Okay. Let me try to think what my question is going to be. If you like, if you are using, no, if you want to use Pinterest, for a marketing strategy, okay? Why do you want to use it? Did your mother tell you about it? Did you see your competitors on there? Do you think it's just a good idea because you know Pinterest is a big deal? Why do you want to use it? Obviously, if you're on this Facebook Live, either you just want to see me talk or you're interested in Pinterest in some way, okay? Why, are, why, why do you feel like Pinterest would be good for you or your business? What is it about it? What do you know, you know? Uh, let me know down below in the comments before I get started. Looks good. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Angela, very, very smart. Let me explain why Angela's very smart. Her comment, not because this was she said, but listen, she said yes, because you told me to. I'm not sure if she's joking. I don't think she's joking, actually, because it, I'm, I'm, I didn't get Angela's permission to say this, but I'm going to say it because she posted it in the group a long time ago. Um, Angela, Angela, um, when she wrote, because you told me to, it's very smart because um, I'm a seller myself and usually when I tell you guys to do something, regardless if it's a course to buy or do something or even things I tell you during Facebook Lives that are for free, like take action, they're usually for a really good reason. You may not know it at the time, okay, but in the future you just have to realize, oh yes, this is definitely, I'm so glad I did this, you know, and Angela's one of those people that remind me, actually I, I was reminded of Angela this morning because she posted in the group, I'm sure you could search somewhere and find it, That, and, and I'm paraphrasing, okay? Angela um, has her own website. She has Etsy, she has Amazon, whatever. No, actually, I don't think she has Amazon. She has Etsy and her own website. And um, if I'm not mistaken, again, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm not paraphrasing. I'm like trying to remember off of memory that she has successfully drove a lot of traffic to her website from an email list, okay? And that she was so happy she – and I think she had an email list before – I talked about email list. I forget. Point is, she listened. She really drove a lot of you know effort into her email list. And then I think it was during like um, I don't know. She sent out an email. And again, you could you could correct me. Uh, be more specific if you want, Angela, in the comments. But she sent out an email and had huge success with it. And a lot of her traffic comes from her email list, targeted traffic, right? But the point I'm trying to say is that usually when I tell you to do something, for the most part, it's for a really good reason. Okay, it's because I care about your success and and I, I speak from experience okay it's almost like you guys I always use this as a, an, as a an example have you guys now that we're all like you know of adult age have you guys like ever realized like when you're an adult that like you went through things or if you have kids you went through things and you're like oh my mom was right you know those type of you know re revelations and that's how I feel for you, meaning I'm telling you what to do, okay, as like a mother, and in the future you're going to realize, yes, Dayo was right. And I want, I don't want you to realize it in a bad way, like, I should have done this, Dayo was right. I want you to realize it, do it, and then in the future you can be like, yes, I did it, and Dayo was right. Does that make sense? Okay, so people are saying a whole bunch of things. People are saying, good morning. Um, Karen says, I'd like to reach more customers. Great point. That's absolutely a really great way to do so. Um, Kelsey, she's in the wedding industry. I know it's a huge tool for brides. Yes, I'm going to talk about what types of products Pinterest is perfect for. And actually, I should have wrote this in the Facebook Live. What types of products Pinterest is not good for? Okay, so listen up if you're those type of products. If you're the type of products I say that you're not, Pinterest is not good for you, literally stay the hell away from it. Like, stay very far away from it because it'll be a waste of time. I'll explain to you what those are in a minute. Um, okay, Samara says, in the Facebook groups I'm in, people have been using Pinterest to drive traffic to their Etsy listings. I know there's a strategy to it, but nobody's sharing how they do it. Now, by the way, I noticed this when I've seen people talk about Pinterest and their strategies or whatever. They actually don't have a, uh, a strategy that they could teach, and I think that's why they probably don't teach it. Besides the point they don't want to teach their competitors how to do it, um, I think there's no rhyme or reason. I think somehow here and there they got lucky. They've, they've pinned, they pinned, they pinned. But that's not really a strategy. That's just me telling my daughter, hey, go to Pinterest and start pinning the hell out of my stuff and other things and whatever. I could tell my daughter to do it, but it's not, it's not that simple. When you, don't, when you don't have a strategy and do what I just said randomly, you may fall on some really good wins. But if you do the strategy I teach you, 
you're going to fall on some really good wins very quickly. And that's why I'm going to show you my stats in just a, in, in just a little bit. I'm going to go over them. Okay? And another thing I want to point out what Samara says, and I'm going to talk about it probably a little bit more. Um, you guys ever, maybe, I'm sure you guys felt this way. If you're on Pinterest, if you're a business owner, you probably went through Pinterest before. And I'm sure you've seen your competitors hanging out on there. And I'm sure, potentially, you have gotten jealous, angry. Like, what? What is this? Okay, looks good. <laughs> um, the stuff people put in the return addresses. Anyway, so um, you probably gotten jealous and said, oh, "How do they get up there? How come they're all over Pinterest?" Right? If you've ever felt that jealousy, that feeling, just own it. Okay, you don't have to tell me down below. Just own it. Then you should probably be on Pinterest. Okay, you should probably be doing this um, to drive traffic to you. Okay, we'll go over it more in just a little bit. I'm going to read the rest of the comments here, okay? Becca says, do you use an automated app to post to Pinterest? I use DLVR, and every time I create a listing, it posts to specific board on Pinterest. I don't know about that app, but yes, I do. Hold on. I use Board Booster. Um, Megan says, I know lots of people look for party ideas on Pinterest. I already have traffic on Pinterest. Yeah, and so sometimes you might say, Dahlia, I'm already getting traffic there, and I haven't, I haven't even done anything. So it feels like I should be on there. That's probably another reason why. Hey, Tawanda. Um, Hillary says, it's so easy. Pin and be done. I have traffic on Shopify from Pinterest every day. You know, Hillary, you're one of the lucky ones. What I'm saying is, like, if you're just pinning and being done, it's, in my personal opinion, it's not that simple because if it was, then everybody would be doing it. Um, sometimes things don't gain traction and you, you feel like you're pinning into, like, the black hole that nobody's looking into. And so... I also teach in this webinar a strategy that allows you to, it's not really pin and be done, but work on your Pinterest strategy and literally be done and leave it alone. Um, when I go over my sales in just a little bit, I want people to understand that and my traffic and views and stuff. I want people to understand that I've implemented, well, not me particularly, I taught my assistant to do it, but nonetheless, we implemented our Pinterest strategy and finished sometime in October. And the sales that resulted, the sales that resulted from it was over time, snowballing, you know, and it, I haven't really touched it ever since then. I went into it in January to adjust some settings. Um, long story, actually, I'll explain to you in just a moment, actually, it's very relevant, but um, yeah, you leave it alone after a while, uh, which is awesome. How do you get people to follow you on Pinterest? I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit. You know, that's actually not one of the biggest deals you should be considering. Um, you know, you could, I don't have much followers on Pinterest, probably like, I don't know, 500, 600, I, I don't even remember. Um, and I get tons of traffic, okay? So that's not the key. However, it does help. I mean, I'll take thousands, thousands of followers. Um, Cause it's not a negative thing. It could help in some way, but it's not the key to success on Pinterest, okay? Um, and I'll, I definitely wanna answer that question. So hang tight, okay? Um, yes, email us is the best thing I've ever done for my business. I started it when you mentioned it, but didn't by your email webinar immediately, so I so it didn't do very do well. After I got it implemented the webinar, my website is rocking and rolling purely from my email list and automated campaigns. Girl, those are gold. Yeah, I absolutely. Well, we're not talking about email list today, um, but yes, I I highly value my email list. And for those of you who are just starting and saying, yeah, I started email list, but I'm not really you know getting any traction. It takes some time to build. Okay, it's snowball effect similar to Pinterest, um, but different. Um, this is a very active thing, and it, it really can bring in some really great results, okay? Um, Megan says, do I offer a six-month payment plan or just a three-month? I only offer three months, okay? Um, okay, so Montana, many people use Pinterest to help with homesteading and farming help or ideas that is my target market. I have, I've got tons of pins for one of my items, but it was pure luck. Cool. All right, so let's go over some things I mentioned in the, um, the Facebook Live text, okay? Um, let's talk about the real pros and cons of using Pinterest as a marketing strategy. I'm going to hit them with you. I'm going to tell you really quick. We can move on to the next thing, okay? So the pros, and I'm, I'm going to try to, like, organize my thoughts here. The pros are um, when you use Pinterest as a marketing strategy, the pros are it's passive. In, in the way I teach it, okay, meaning you implement the strategy. Let's just say, because you have millions of products, not millions, hundreds of products, it takes you, and you're a fairly busy person, it takes you about one month to implement, okay? Let's just say, okay? Can you, can you move everything up a little bit? 
like over here, like up to here. Does that make sense? Um, it takes it takes some time to implement, right? And then after that, the pro to it is you could technically leave it alone. So what happens? It becomes passive. What, what happens even more? You are a busy individual. I mean, let's let's just talk about how busy we are. We're, I mean, filling orders. I mean, I don't know how many people work for you guys if you work by yourself, but in general, we're filling orders. We're our own photographer. We do our own bookkeeping. We do this. We deal with customers. I mean, we wear so many hats, right? And we're also, I mean, I'm hoping you're working on some type of marketing strategy, right? You're working on SEO. You're working on building your Amazon shop. You're working on this. I mean, it's a big headache, right? It's so much stuff we have to do. And so the pro to using Pinterest in the way I teach it, okay, because um, somebody's like, oh, you just pin it and that's it. It could be, but if you have the strategy that I'm teaching you, you pin, you do your thing, and then you leave it alone. And until now, I have not touched the Pinterest, um, my Pinterest account since since October. I mean, she knows, since October. And it's literally still driving sales. And we still celebrate every time we get a sale on my website from Pinterest. And, and by the way, you could pin you could use Pinterest for Etsy, you could use it for Amazon, you could use it for website. You could use it for any of them. I just, I'm, I rather would just use it for website, okay? You could use it for all three, you could use it for one of them. So if you're only selling Etsy, please don't wait. Well, let me just say this. If you have no plans on creating a website in the near future, then fine, don't wait to use Pinterest. Drive your sales to Etsy. Now eventually, yes, eventually over time, if you're like, okay, I'm done, you know, Pinterest, uh, sorry, Etsy's like acting like a fool, and I'm, I'm making my own website now, and I want to start driving traffic there, you can still take what I taught you, okay, as if you started fresh and implement it for your website, the Pinterest strategy, okay? So anyway, it, it brings in passive uh, passive traffic. And so you're chilling, right? This is hypothetically speaking, you're chilling, and all of a sudden you're still getting traffic each and every day from Pinterest. And it's a snowball, okay? Whether, I don't know if you consider this pro or con, but it is what it is. It's a snowballing effect. When you, let's say you finish implementing the strategy Let's just say you worked on it for a while and you finish implementing it by tomorrow. You don't get hundreds and hundreds of views by the next week. Well, actually, you may, depending on what market you sell in, but nonetheless, you don't, you don't, it doesn't work that quickly, right? It snowballs. It's not like an, well, it could be like an overnight thing if one of your pins go viral. Um, but nonetheless, it, it takes some time to snowball. And so when I share my stats with you in just a moment, I, 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 um, a lot of people have been following me for a while in this group. I recognize your names. You're going to see maybe six months from now, let's not even talk about it, a year from now, how different my stats are going to be, okay, and in a positive way because it's a snowball. You guys, not, you guys understand the idea of a snowball, right? It starts off small and goes bigger, okay? Um, and so that's what I want for you. I want a passive strategy that you could, let's just say hypothetically, leave alone, okay, and it brings traffic because you have, you're over here doing a whole bunch of other things that are very active, working on SEO, you know, Filling orders is a very active thing. It's not passive unless you have a digital business, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to, I want you to have some passive things in your business that either, well, passive in bringing in traffic, pa passive in some ways, okay, bringing in income, et cetera. And this is a tr passive traffic strategy, okay? Um, so that's a pro, okay? Um, another pro, well, I'm not going to go into that pro. I'll go into it in just a little bit when I read off some stats from Pinterest, from actual from the Pinterest people, but I'm going to go directly into a con because I think about something that I um, that I just think about automatically. Okay, so here's a here's a con to Pinterest, and I guess there is a positive to it, but the con to Pinterest is that, and people that well, if you're very aware of your Pinterest strategy, then you probably know this. But if you've just gotten lucky on Pinterest, you probably don't know this. Um, Pinterest users are not loyal by nature, meaning I'm on Pinterest and I'm looking for party stuff for my, let's say, kid, okay? Let's say I'm doing a unicorn theme. So I'm looking for unicorn party stuff. Type, 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 type. I find some things. I purchase and I'm done. I, I, I'm not loyal to that brand. I was loyal to that beautiful picture and that beautiful item that inspired me to buy for my kid's party. Do you guys follow? And so that's a con, right? Now, the way to turn that into a pro, this, this is for another topic, obviously, um, you you'd probably get them on your email list, have them follow you on social media elsewhere, Turn them into a customer you continue talk, talking to, continue marketing to. I am a big, uh, like, my strategy is when people come to Pinterest, I'm pushing my email list. Okay, so that's one way I turn that con into a pro. But that's the reality, that the people that are on Pinterest are not loyal, you know. And here's why it's not so bad. It is a con, but it's not so bad. Because 
when you work on this Pinterest strategy, I guess he's another pro. When you work on this Pinterest strategy, because of how much traffic eventually it's going to give you, like right now, and I'll look at my stats in a little bit when I share it with you guys. I think I'm I'm bringing in. I'm I'm guessing. I have to double check. Um, this looks good. Three to four hundred views a month already at this at this point, maybe more. And I think it's gonna go up during like the busy season. Like right now is my slow season. Um, during I think it's May June. Yeah, May June I get busy, really busy. Um, anyway, so the idea is you're getting so much traffic passively. You're not working hard at it anymore. Like you did the strategy, that it doesn't. Not that it doesn't matter, but I'll just, for lack of a better word, it doesn't really matter that you know you had all the people not loyal to you because the strategy doesn't keep bringing in like this free traffic to you. Does that make sense? And another um, con I want to point out to Pinterest is when, so you have I'm gonna give you example number. You know you have 5,000 views a month from Pinterest, okay? And you will only get X amount of sales. And so the conversion rate is lower because again they're not loyal. Um, you know they don't they don't quite trust you yet. They don't know who you are. They could trust you more, by the way, if you when they landed on your website after you pinned it, um, that your website is to be trusted. We talked about this before, by the way, in regards to um, yeah, this looks good. In regards to websites that convert, you know, having a chat feature, making sure it's well laid out, make sure it looks professional, well designed. Blah, 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 blah. Right, but the point is, you have a lower conversion rate usually compared to, let's say, definitely compared to email list, but compared to somebody shopping on Amazon or Etsy directly. Okay, now you might say, well, Dalia, why would I invest my, my time and energy in something that gives me a lower conversion rate? Because this, here's the con that turns into a pro for me. Okay, because literally, I have not touched Pinterest since October. So why? And, and so it's keep bringing me traffic, passive traffic. So why do I care that, you know, I'm going to give a number here just to make it easier to digest. One second. Uh, okay. Okay. So imagine I get, for every 1,000 views, I get 10 sales. Okay, that's 1%, okay, on Pinterest. Why do I care that I usually only get 1% conversion on Pinterest? compared to 5% on my website. I'm just getting that traffic passively. I'm not particularly working hard at it. It's something that is just passive. It's just extra, okay? And so it doesn't matter to me that it's going to be less people because I'm not actively working on it. Does that make sense? I hope you guys, I'm not sure if I'm articulating it correctly, but I hope you guys follow because over time, guess what? So remember, it's a snowballing strategy. Right now, I think I'm getting like, I have to double check my stats. Like 500 views a month or something. I, I forget. Let's just say, let's just call it 500. And if I'm converting at one um, percent, that's five um, sales a month. Okay. So when that traffic, imagine it stays at the same exact conversion rate. Okay, which is that one percent. Imagine my views are no longer 500 because a snowballing strategy over time it becomes I'm telling you, over over time, okay? Um, let's say in a month, one second. Yeah, let's just say over a really course a long time, because again, it has a snowball, 10,000 views a month, okay? So 10,000 views a month times the 1% conversion. That's 100 sales a month, okay, passively. So why do, and of course, I always want you guys to work on things, um, work on things that, um, make your conversion higher. That's why I have a chat feature on my website. That's why I have my website in general converts really well, blah, blah, blah. So always look to improve your conversion. But nonetheless, why, why would I complain? Over time, that, that traffic's going to build and build and build. So 1% of 500 maybe is not a lot. I'll take it, though, because I just started my Pinterest strategy. But, and I'm not talking about, and it could happen for you depending on your market. I sell stationery. Okay, so. Let's just be honest. Um, it's not one of the most high demand things on Pinterest, FYI. Maybe my invitations are and things like that. That's the stuff that gets the most traffic. But, you know, when you're selling other things like wedding or whatever, you may have better results than me, just FYI. <laughs> I'm just calling it like I see it. But you will eventually get, let's just say, I'm going to throw a number here. Maybe two years down the road, I'll get 10,000 
views a month, and that would make that would mean if at one percent conversion rate, a hundred sales, right? And Abby said it perfectly. Once the work is done, the traffic is free. So you guys get me, right? What is there to complain about, right? I don't care if it's slow. So there is a con to using Pinterest as far as conversion, but it's it's free traffic, right? Why would you why why complain? Um, so Erica says, would Pinterest be better for one of a kind items or re reproducible products? I love this question. I'm going to answer it now because I, I talked above um, the products Pinterest is perfect for. So if you sell these, you need to be on Pinterest. Okay. So I'm going to start out by saying what it's not good for. Okay. What is not good for? It is not good for one of a kind items. And I'll explain my theory in just a moment. But you guys are smart. You probably already know my theory. One of a kind items. Okay. Or vintage, which is one of a kind. Okay, here is why. Using Pinterest, it's it's especially the way I teach it. You know, it's um, the point of using the Pinterest the way I teach it is because I want this item, this pin. Imagine you you pinned this vintage pen, right? Why would you want to pin this? Work on the strategy. And eventually, this is going to get sold, and that pin is no longer working. It's a broken link because it's sold now. Now, especially if you're on a website, okay, and you list this item on a website, this vintage item, and now Pinterest has all these broken links, it's probably bad for your website, okay, FYI, because now, now it directs to nowhere. Sure, you can put a redirect on your website, but it just, why, why, why waste your energy and time or whatever working on a Pinterest strategy? Yes, I know, over time, after you implement it, it becomes passive, but why? Why not work on something that makes more sense for your one-of-a-kind business, such as email list, perfect, perfect for one-of-a-kind items, um, especially vintage email lists, because it really does grab a whole bunch of your um, loyal fan base and email list. So when something does come out, let's say if you bought a whole bunch of really great vintage finds and you email your loyal following, then you could sell like this, and that's it. When it's gone, it's gone. Another place to sell one of a kind slash vintage items is somewhere where the feed keeps moving, such as Facebook or even Instagram. Okay, those are better. Okay, um, and when I say better, I mean don't touch Pinterest if you're one of a kind. Okay, so let's talk about what Pinterest is really good for. What types of mar what types of markets? Hold on. So listen up. If you sell any of the following, and you're not already on Pinterest or considering it or using my strategy. It's pretty much foolish, okay? Um, yes. So if you create products that target moms, whether it be for them themselves or for their children, I know that's a very general category, but nonetheless, you should be on Pinterest. Why? Because moms are on Pinterest. It's not something that I'm thinking because, oh, because they're stay-at-home moms are hanging out on Pinterest. Well, yes, that may be the case, but um, – uh, studies and stats show that they are moms who are using Pinterest. Okay, so that's just an easy kind of segue into what you know. What's if it's perfect for you, Pinterest? If you're selling things to moms, whether it be for themselves or for their children or their babies. Okay, and of course, I'm gonna piggyback on that and say if you're selling things for that are children related or baby related. Okay, um, so I mean, there's a lot of people in this category. It's it's a wide variety. So if you're selling newborn items, nursery items, clothing for kids. I mean, accessories for kids, I don't know, you name it, it's probably plenty of that, okay? You should also be on Pinterest, okay? Because, again, that shopper, the babies are not shopping, the kids are not shopping, the mom is, she's hanging out on Pinterest. Your target market's on Pinterest, okay? Now, it is no secret, so we mentioned it earlier, I hope it's not a secret for you, but the wedding customer is all over Pinterest, okay? So if you're in the wedding industry in some form or another, whether your whole shop is consists of wedding something, um, or you have a portion of your shop that consists of wedding something, myself, um, <clears throat> you should be on Pinterest. Now, I want to make something very, very clear. Um, before I launch my Pinterest webinar to you guys, I have a friend who's also in stationery, a good close friend of mine, but she does a wedding, only a wedding. And so she started her Pinterest strategy similar to the time frame I did it, but she's doing much better than me. Why is that? Is it because the, the student has become the teacher? Not exactly. Um, I think she's doing great at it, but she still has some more things to implement. It's because her market thrives more than mine. I'm still doing fine. I'm not complaining because over time, like I said, it's in a snowball, okay? <clears throat> but because her market, there's like 
the, the demand for her type of market um, is much more than mine. Let's just call it how it is. I'm just going to say it. I'm not saying my market's bad. This looks good. My market's bad, meaning stationary, um, particularly just personalized stationary. But there's a higher, I mean, it's no, it's no secret. There's a higher demand for wedding type than just regular personalized stationary. There just is, okay? Um, if I wanted to be something in higher demand, I would definitely went into wedding, but that's not the case. I like what I'm doing, okay? So the point is some people may get different results than me, okay? And that's okay. Some people might get less results than me, but again, over time, it starts to snowball, all right? So another thing, it's a very general category here, that if you sell this type of product, okay, you'll be perfect on Pinterest, is if you have a business, that doesn't really encourage repeat clients, okay? So if you have products that don't finish, right, so people have to buy more, then you should probably be on Pinterest. Now, let me explain this to you. So when people buy stationery from me, of course, if they're into letter writing or whatever, um, they're gonna eventually buy more when it runs out, right, give or take, okay? So this is uh, an item that gets uh, used up. If you, and of course, by the way, if you do have an item that gets used up, you'll still be fine on Pinterest, by the way. But if you definitely have an item that does not get used up, that there's no need for the customer to repeat buy from you, such as wedding items, uh, yes, people can go, you know, have another wedding in the future. But reality is most of your customers will not come back um, <clears throat> for another, like, wedding invitation, right? He'll say a few years down, years down the road. But the reality is, the reason why it makes sense to be on Pinterest if you have a non-repeatable business because you're always getting new customers, new customers, new customers. Because the, the strategy you implemented, the one I taught you in the webinar, will always work on getting you new clients, new clients, new clients, new clients. Okay? So it just makes sense that if you have a business that does not encourage repeat clients, okay, then the marketing strategy that is best for you best, meaning compared to email lists, compared to Facebook, compared to Instagram, blah, blah, is Pinterest, okay, because it's always working on getting you new clients, always, okay, Whew, that was a mouthful, okay, um, another, a couple other um, things you should consider if you have this type of product, you should be on Pinterest is um, if you are in the party market, okay, um, also if you are in the market that sells trendy items, you guys know who you are if you're selling trendy items. Um, that should definitely be considered. If you have those type of products, you should be on Pinterest, okay? There's probably a few more that I'm missing, but I think I've covered a huge portion, okay? Let's see here. Hold on. Okay, Erica says, let's say I retire an item. So imagine you had this calculator you've been selling for ages, and that's it. It's lost popularity. It's no longer relevant. It used to have, you know, it used to have, it has a, a unicorn on it, and unicorns are no longer popular, and she wants to retire it. Um, you may have had that item. So I think, I, forgive me, Erica, I don't remember if I do discuss it in the webinar, but it's a really simple thing I can tell you right now. If you have an item that you no longer carry, if you, and this, is, this matters the most, if you have a website. If you go to, if you pin it to Etsy or Amazon, Amazon Etsy will take care of that redirect for you. And this item's no longer available, but shop these, right? If you have a website, you should have, uh, forgive me if I forgot the code. Somebody could correct me right now. But it has like a, there's like a, either an app or a setting or something in your website that for any broken link, it takes you to this custom page you created. So for example, imagine Erica has five items now that she no longer carries, okay? She could easily, from those items, redirect to a new item that's similar. She could do that. Or in general, she should put the setting in that for any broken link that does not redirect to an item, it directs to the front page, for example, okay? Um, so that's just the answer to that. I don't have to teach it in the webinar, but that's the answer to that. And it's important to do it on your website for two reasons. One, so that, per, that Pinterest user doesn't go to waste, like they at least will find something and potentially continue shopping. Or, and um, Google doesn't hate your guts for having all these broken links. Got it? Good. Okay. Um, I sell nappy cakes and baby hampers. And there are loads of pins on Pinterest that give step-by-step -step guide on how to make similar ones. So would Pinterest be any good for my kind of products where similar tutorials are already available on Pinterest? I don't know what nappy cakes are. I know, a baby hamper. Is a baby hamper? What's a baby hamper? Isn't that a laundry basket? I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not familiar. 
I should be, right? And the point is, she's saying a lot of DIYers are hanging out on Pinterest. Should I be pinning my stuff on there? Yes, because there's definitely a market for people that don't care to DIY. You would think, I'm just throw this out there, I'm not talking bad about my industry at all. Heck, I'm in my industry, right? <laughs> you would think that, okay, I'm trying to find a card around here. A printed card. It's not printed on. You would think that somebody could easily take a card, cardstock, and then paste something on Microsoft Word and see a beautiful design of mine and reprint it themselves. Right now, not everything can be reprinted. There's a lot of some design elements that they don't know or blah, 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 blah. Right? You get it. But why am I still thriving? Why am I still thriving on Etsy, Amazon, on website, um, and even on Pinterest, right? Because there's definitely a market for people that don't want to DIY, okay? And so depend. I don't know what your items are exactly, so forgive me. I don't know what a nappy cake is or I don't know what a baby hamper is. Isn't it a laundry basket? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, some people would definitely recreate our items. That's absolutely must. But that doesn't mean just be like they were never a customer to begin with. You just gave them the idea. To, you just, you just um, you know, if they didn't find yours, they would have found somebody else's to copy. Right, so we don't care about the DIYers. They can, they're gonna still live on. That's fine. They could DIY. They could go to Etsy and DIY. They could go anywhere and DIY. Right? Heck, we probably DIY stuff ourselves in our lifetime. Right? That's fine. Those were not your customers anyway. Don't think that you had that customer and you lost them because they decided to DIY your item. You know, there is a market on Pinterest for people that buy. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. And there's definitely ones that will DIY your items. Okay, we're not worried about them because, like I said, somebody just mentioned earlier. Who cares? The, the, once the work is done, the traffic is free. So remember how I told you the conversion rate, for example, is 1% out of the 1,000 people, 10 people will buy, right? Let's show an example, right? Um, let's say another 10% is DIYers. Another one is browsers. Another one will buy later. So there's going to be a portion of those views that are like that, and that's okay. We're, we're, all we're concerned about is getting those ones that are interested in purchasing. Because the DIYer was never going to be your customer unless in the future you realize how hard your item is to replicate and they end up buying from you. Oh, this one again? Cool. This looks good. Okay. Pet products are great for Pinterest. Yes. Mine is horse pack and my items get pin a lot of pins. You know, I, I didn't know about I don't I don't know much about horses, FYI. Um, but yes, pet products, absolutely. Um, I think it is Angela. I forget the 30. Okay, these numbers are confusing me. If you take a 301 redirect, is if you take a link to this calculator that no longer exists and link them to another product, or to the new URL for this calculator. However, the 404, I think, is in general. Yes, I think it's a 404 where you could lead all your redirect, uh, all your broken links. So, so I think on Handmade Mastermind. I have a 404 page that was that's I forgot what's on it that pretty much was like hey I mean this is link does not exist but why don't you take a look at this this and that you know you, or you can lead them to a your home page okay all right if you guys just joined me let me just say this the mastering Pinterest launch is here um, it's for three days only today tomorrow and Wednesday meaning three days only meaning after the three days is done the Pinterest webinar will no longer be available for purchase for a while okay I'm explaining that to you actually in just a moment. Um, and after, so it's no longer available for a while. When it does eventually become available, it'll be $50 more expensive. Okay, so right now it's $50 less, okay? Um, <coughs> I also include free bonus templates for Pinterest um, that will not be available after today's launch. Now, FYI, when you purchase the course, if you're purchasing it right now, that bonus templates that I'm talking about will be added to your account manually by me within 24 hours. Just FYI, okay? Um, so you're not gonna see it automatically when you first sign in, okay? Now, um, I wanna talk about how um, you could get the free coaching session. I can't believe I didn't mention that already, okay? Oh, the bee looks uncentered. One second, guys. Yeah, and then bring it down a little bit. I don't know how I went to the other side. Let me see it let go. Can you move it a little bit to the left? Let go. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Um, sorry, guys. So anyway, 
how do you win the free coaching session? So a lot of times when I do giveaways and stuff, I'm, you know, I try to be very, um, what's the word? Giving, I guess, you know. Um, I usually make an entry that's very, very simple, like, hey, tell me your favorite food or whatever, right? Um, so it's a little bit different, you know. In order to win the, pinch, the free coaching session, by the way, the coaching session can be used for anything. If you have no idea how to use the coaching session, I usually um, take over. And I usually know based on a few different questions I ask you in a coaching questionnaire that you will get um, which way to lead you and what you should focus on. So if you really have no idea what to focus on, you're like, just help me, I want to make more money, then I can help you. You don't have to have, you don't have to go into the coaching session knowing exactly what you want to talk about, okay? Nonetheless, um, the coaching session gets, you can win the free coaching session, it's an hour. Um, sometimes it goes a little, a little over an hour, just FYI. And I'm, I'm not, it's fine by me, you know? Um, if you purchase the Pinterest webinar, Today, today, okay? Tomorrow, tomorrow, one second, today and tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, wait, hold on. I'm so silly. Today's Tuesday. Hold on. Sorry, March 22nd. Hold on, I'm so confused. My bad, March 22nd is not Wednesday, it's Thursday. So the Pinterest three day launch ends on Thursday. Okay, so, sorry, I was confused for a second. It, but anyway, the per point is if you purchase the Pinterest course today, okay, tomorrow I will put your name in a basket and hat, something, okay, and I will draw your name, one person, and that person will win the free coaching session, okay? So in order to enter, you have to purchase the course, obviously. Um, and I don't care if you purchase it full price or in payment plans, okay? You could definitely still, you still get an entry into, um, the free coaching session, okay? And the free coaching session has to be um, scheduled within three months. So you don't have to use it right away. Don't worry. I know people are very busy. That's absolutely fine, okay? Um, so that's how you that's how you win that. Um, now, if you purchase the course tomorrow during the launch, good for you. You have the course, but you won't be entered to win the free coaching session. And I will tell you something, just a little hint, if I, if I may say so. A lot of people pre-sold this course, okay? A lot of people. A lot of people. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you buy it today, you have, in my opinion, a very high chance of winning the coaching session because <laughs> I don't know this for a fact, but I feel like a majority of people already have the course that already wanted it. Um, meaning there won't be, in my opinion, I don't know, I could be wrong, too many people who buy it today, buy it during launch. So imagine, let's say 10 people buy it, your chances are high for winning the coaching session. So if you want to get the course, get a taste, you could probably win the coaching session, okay? Let me just lower my phone. Okay, so, so, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. now let's go into how much traffic, how much sales and money I made from Pinterest already, okay? And I, if you follow me on Instagram, I shared this a few times in my Instagram stories. So if you do, if you do follow me there, then you probably already know, well, not all of it, but you probably already know some of this um, information. Let me, um, by the way, I'm pulling up Pinterest right now as we speak. Okay, so currently, now I have two Pinterest accounts, FYI. I have one for my e-commerce business, one for moder uh, for Handmade Mastermind. I'm obviously referring to my e-commerce business, which is most relevant to you. Yes, yes. Okay, so currently, um, and I'm going to explain to you what some of these mean. Currently, my uh, Pinterest account gets 145,000, actually almost 146,000 monthly viewers. Okay, I'll explain to you what that means in just a moment. Okay, but that many viewers. Now, during the Pinterest uh, pre-sell, which, guys, if you remember when, when it was, let me know, but it was around a month and a half ago, okay, that number was 127,000 viewers, monthly viewers. You can do the math. 146, no, 127. That went up 19,000 viewers, okay, in a course of a month and a half. Let me explain what viewers mean to you, by the way. Let me go to my profile. Oh, not my profile. Let me go to my analytics in my uh, Pinterest account. Momento. Okay, so... Okay, so the people that I reach, like I mentioned, is a hundred and what 
where did that number go? 146, I forgot what it was, 146 monthly viewers. What did I say? 146,000, 145,000? I don't know, something like that, okay? Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me pull up my stats here. Okay, now the average monthly engaged people are 3,600. Now let me explain what that means to you, okay? And I'm just reading off stats and explain what that means to you. The 140 some odd thousand, I've got the exact number, because now I'm on a different page. Monthly viewers means people who see my pins, okay? People who see my pins, they just look at their on Pinterest and they see the pin, okay? Now, a month and a half ago, it was 127,000. And now it's 100 and, hold on, 146,000, there you go. Now it's 146,000, so it went up 19,000. People that actually see my pins in their feed, okay? That's what that means. They didn't do anything yet, okay? They see it. All right, now, um, the people who average monthly engage is 3,600. Okay, so 3,600 people acted on my pins. Engage meaning, in my opinion, is did something to it. They either clicked, they, so they clicked on the pin, they either saved it, yes. They clicked on the pin to zoom into it, you guys know what that means. They saved it or repinned it, um, or they went to my website. They, they engaged with that pin, okay? So 3,600 people currently, okay, are doing that, all right? Let me change my stats here and look at something else. That's in general the people I reach. Okay, now let's talk about my website. Oh, okay. Um, my website particularly. So in, in the Pinterest stats, there is um, there's people you reach, there's your website, blah blah. Okay, let's see here. In the last 30 days, okay, my pins, my pins. So I have a mixture of pins from my items, you know, things I sell, and pins from other things like like infographics and blog posts and, and other things, okay? Because, you know, you can't just pin only your products. You guys know that. I teach you more about that in the webinar. The average daily um, impressions for my pins, meaning impressions meaning people that see, that see the pin on their feed, my pin, my product pin, okay, that lead to my website are the daily impressions are 11,500, okay? So that's cool. And by the way, from the last 30 days, it's up 14%. And I'm gonna start slowly going up, by the way, because I'm, gonna start, I'm getting into my busier season, which is uh, May, June. Now, if you were here during the pre-sale time, when I launched the pre this webinar for pre-sale, I, what what I do? I went, I think I launched it in beginning of February. Okay, I believe so. My stats were still impressive, but it shows down. Why? Because I come off of December, January, which are very busy months for me, into February. Okay? So when you're looking at your own stats eventually, it's not always important to look if it's up or down to the last 30 days. Because if you have a busy season going into a slow season, that's probably why. So the time I did the pre-sale, it showed a downward uh, growth because... Um, I went from a busy season to a slower one. That's okay, okay? But now I'm going upward because I'm slowly starting to get into my busier season. After June is done, it's supposed to go downward a little bit more. And I know my, I know my, uh, my trends, okay? Then it's supposed to go up starting from October. You get me, right? Okay. Okay, so average daily impressions, people that see it, okay? And then average daily viewers, okay, is 4,400, okay? So what does that mean? they actually viewed the pin, okay? They actually clicked on it and viewed it. They may have done something else with it. They may have repinned it. They may have went to my website. We don't know that yet. People have actually clicked on my pin. Daily is 4,500. Considering, by the way, that I just implemented, finished my, implementing my strategy in October, not too shabby, okay? Because again, I literally left it alone and it starts to, starts to um, what's this word here? <laughs> Snowball, okay? All right, now that's impressions. Okay, impressions of people that are just viewing it. Hold on. All right, so this is um, in the last two weeks, the stats right here. Average daily saves. 
people that repinned my items. On average, right now, is 52, okay, in the last two weeks, okay? Now, it looks like it went up a little bit at one point, okay? Um, something must have happened because it went viral, I don't know. But in the last 30 days, it's, it was 46, okay? So in the last two weeks, something must have happened, a bump, because it went up 52. Not a huge number, but nonetheless, average daily saves is 52. Okay, so I'm getting 52 repins um, on average a day for my pins that lead to my website, okay? Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are writing any comments. Make sure. Okay. Stacy, just checked my daily impression since implementing the webinar up 176%. Here's the best part, Stacy. I know you just started it not too long ago. Wait till you see six months from now, a year from now. Okay, wait. It's if anything, you know, Pinterest and a few other ones, it's really a snowballing strategy. Okay? You're gonna start to see it going over, you know, start to see it start to really, you know, snowball. I'm gonna talk to you more about that in a moment. But it's really, really exciting. Okay, let me continue reading off my stats. Where is it? Okay. So, um, okay, so I said average daily saves is uh, 52, okay? Now, let me go back. And by the way, there's a number underneath that. Average daily people saving. There's a difference. Average daily saves, meaning how many pins were repinned? 52 on average, okay? But the amount of people who are repinning them are only seven. So, these seven people are really engaged with my content. They're repeating multiple of my things, okay? That's the last 14 days. Let me kind of put in perspective to you what snowballing means, okay? Is it okay? No. Oh. It looks, it looks okay now. Oh, no? Oh, no. Can you um, move it to the left a little bit? Because you know when it does that. Okay, okay. So um, let's go back into October when I pretty much started my strategy. Okay. In October, where is it? Come on. Hold on. Let's do two weeks again. Come on. Okay. Two weeks. Okay. 17 daily saves. Now it's 52, okay? So there's a difference. And again, snowball strategy at its best. Okay, so anyway, we went to daily save, which I think is, I mean, you know what's really important on Pinterest? Saves, which is repins, so then other people could see that content from other people, and then clicks, people that actually end up being on your website. You'll find that you'll get a lot more repins than clicks in the beginning especially, because your, your items have to start growing on Pinterest, and more people still have to start seeing it, right? So that's very, very normal. Going to clicks, again, this is two weeks, last two weeks, yeah, last two weeks is average daily clicks is 10, okay, so it means average of 10 daily visitors to my website, okay, from Pinterest. Let's put that in perspective here, let's go back into give or take the beginning of time, not beginning of time, but when I first started the strategy, that was four. Okay, and now move to 10 people visiting. Now, again, it is very normal to see much more saves than people clicking through the website. What does that mean? I mean, I think you guys know what that means. That means people on Pinterest and they like something, they repin it. They like something, they repin it. You would think, by the way, that you're like, Dahlia, I love repinning. I think it's great, but I want people to come to my website more. Yes, I know that, but you have to build, you have to like, you have to care about the number of people that are repinning your items because when Dahlia or Sally repins your item and so does John and so does Jessica, right? They repin your items. Their followers will see your items and then so on and so forth, right? You're such a branch out, more people, more people. And so eventually over time, your clicks will get higher and higher, okay? So when you're looking at your Pinterest analytics and saying, yeah, repins are great and I want more clicks. Yes, I agree with you. I want people to come to your website. But just know that more than likely, repins will always be greater than clicks. And that's okay. That's great. You want people to be sharing your content. Okay? All right. So let me see if anything anybody commented down below. Okay. 
Yes, Abby, I, I look forward to you diving into the Pinterest course. For those of you who already purchased the Pinterest course either today or on pre-sale, somebody messaged me yesterday on, um, on uh, Instagram, okay? And I posted something on Instagram showing my sales. And I do that often because it's very, by the way, me and my sister are very tired when we get Pinterest sales. That and Google, okay? Um, for the repeat customers, it's we're used to it now because they always come back to my .com. Anyway, so when I posted that, I showed people how much uh, potential Pinterest has, and the person messaged me and said, when was this? When were these sales from? It was all one day? And I said, no, the two top two were from one day, and the other one was from two days prior. And she's like, okay, great. I have the Pinterest course, and I haven't yet implemented it. I'm excited too. I said to her, Please implement it as soon as possible. Like I mentioned earlier, it is very much a snowballing strategy. Oh, was it you? <laughs> Michelle. Michelle was the one that messaged me. So sometimes I don't know people's names based on their Instagram names, okay? Implement it as soon as possible, okay? Now, I completely understand, and I'm with you when you are overwhelmed with orders, when you're overwhelmed with X, Y, Z. Like, you're doing, you're doing a whole bunch of things as business owners. I get it, okay? I get it. Now. It's another, it's another thing to say, you know, are you prioritizing correctly, right, to make sure you're working on things that really, really matter. The point is, and if you need help prioritizing, post in the group. Say, hey, Dahlia, I'm working on this, this, and this, and that on my to-do list. Which one should I eliminate? Which one should I keep, right? And I'll help you for free. Just post it in the group. The point is, work on your Pinterest strategy as soon as possible. I, we worked on it. When I say we, me, my assistant, my assistant meaning. But the point is, uh, it took us a while to implement because in between her printing and doing other things, but we knew that when uh, when October hit, we had to be done with it because holiday season was going to be approaching us. And so we finished it sometime in October. We forget exactly when. And that was it, meaning finished it, meaning all my products and all the Pinterest strategy was completed for the most part, okay? So, you know, start it as soon as you can because that snowball can now start to, start to turn. Start to turn? Start to snowball, right? You get the point, right? And so... If you're sitting there saying, Dahlia, I get you, I will, I'm just working on X, Y, Z, and if you know that X, Y, Z is important, fine, fine. But if you're, if you're wondering, Dahlia, I'm working on this, but I'm not really sure if it's actually a priority over Pinterest, then you, know, you could definitely post in the group and or split your time. Um, it's similar to people who want to join Amazon. I tell people, join Amazon as soon as possible. You're literally like letting dollars like leave your, leave your hands. So I tell people, if you work on important strategies, list five items in a week. List five items in a day. Whatever you have time for, list two items a day. Now, some people might look at that and go, oh, what a waste of time. I'll never get anywhere. But two items a day after 30 days, because you guys could do the math, right? You know, 30 days later, when you've complained all for those 30 days, you would have had 60 items. 60 items? Yeah, 60 items listed by the end of 30 days. Okay? And, of course, always start with your bestsellers, et cetera. Okay? Same goes for Pinterest. If you're like, Dahlia, I don't really have that much time. Can you, first of all, I tell people, any of my webinars, listen to it while you're doing something. Cleaning. You have to pay attention to it, obviously. But if you're cleaning, you know, you can just listen to it or whatever. Clean the dishes, something. Absorb the information. Then when you're ready to start on it, you don't have much time, granted. But you can implement a little at a time. So you know what? Dahlia taught me X, Y, and Z, you know, in this, in this Pinterest webinar. I don't have much time, but Wednesday I'm going to implement this little piece, okay? And then Friday, I'm implement this little piece. Break it down, okay? You'll be happy you did a month from now when other people would have complained they had no time to implement it. I really push this because um, it, it is really one of those strategies that, you know, over time, it will start to snowball because um, 30 days from now, you could have had some traffic, right? And then six months from now, right, you could have some more traffic, et cetera, and so forth, okay? Um, Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Um, I have a personal Pinterest account. Can I make a separate business account or do I have to convert my personal to a business account? At Sons of Boards, I would like to hide, I would have to hide if I had to convert my personal to my business. I talk about this in the webinar, but I will say this here. I don't like people managing more than one Pinterest account. It's messy. It's annoying. I feel like if you did, you'd never log back onto your personal one and you'd never see those pins again. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So what I would recommend, you can do whatever you want. You can definitely open a separate one if you want, but I would recommend using that personal one, turning it into a business one, taking all your personal boards, right? And again, I go over it much more in detail in the webinar, so make sure you look at that section 
and making those into secret boards. So only you could view them for your own personal use. Like you know those like food boards and those hairstyle boards that you guys like to save, right? That's what I would put into secret. Okay? So you don't have to manage more than one account. You can manage that one that you have for business. And then once in a while when you want to look for that food recipe you pin, you can look in your secret board. Okay? All right. So let me go over a few more things that I'm missing. Hold on. So I talked about the real pros and cons somewhat. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I talked about the stats. Okay. And now let's look at the traffic I get. Well, actually, you can kind of do um, the math. But where is my? I'm going to Google Analytics. Ah, I can't spell Google Analytics. I'm going to Google Analytics to let you know how much traffic I get um, from Pinterest. Again, passive traffic. I have not touched anything regarding Pinterest. Okay. So free traffic. Okay, um, and again, I just finished my Pinterest strategy in October, and so considering that it's just, and by the way, it's been several months now, right? So October, I think it was end of October. I don't remember. Okay, so let's not count October. Okay, November, December, January, February, March. So five months has, well, not even five months. Let's just say five months. Okay, round it out. It's been five months, and so I have some traffic there, and I'm about to go over it in a second with you, but understand that I'm not going to sit here and tell you I have 10,000 views a month. Okay, that would be really nice. And by the way, some of you could have better results than me in the five months that you implement your strategy. So after you implement it, the same time frame, you may have better results than me. Okay, you may have worse results than me. The point is, depending on your market, that's what it will depend on. So when I show you, when I tell you my stats, you know, it's not about being impressed or with it or not impressed with it. It's understanding that it is a snowballing strategy. When I implement something like that, when you implement something like this, it doesn't immediately mean 10,000 views a month. Now, if something goes viral, okay, then yes, it could mean a big bump for you, okay? Can you put a, one second, guys, can you put a space after the dash, see, before 6 p.m.? Um, oh, I wonder. Can you put a comma after Boulevard? Because you don't have to address city, state. So a comma after Boulevard before April 18. Let me show that target. And then after you do that, just move it up a little bit. Because when I chop, I want to make sure it's not too, too close. OK? I have to empty up that garbage can. Anyway, so anyway, I'm, let, me, let me sign in and tell you what those, those are, OK? So understand that I'm not here to show you these like crazy figures and say, oh, you could be having 10,000 views a month to implement my strategy. That could happen if you're in the right market and one of your pins go viral, especially in the beginning. Now, if I was doing this for years, then my figures might be obviously higher. But this is just realistic, okay? And that's the type of figures you want to see from somebody. So, one, it's believable. Okay, hold on. One on pink paper. Okay. Acquisition. All traffic. Over here. I'm just going into Google Analytics to pull up how many people came from Pinterest. Um... So I could tell you. What's my... Let's do last 30 days. That's probably the best thing to do right now. Sorry, I keep yawning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pretty much 300. Okay, and that makes sense because I had 10. I had 10 uh, views on um, Pinterest analytics. I had 10 average clicks a day to my website um, for the last 30 days. Do you remember when I read that to you guys? Yes, love it. Okay. Um, so that's that. Now, um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm just double checking that is correct. I'm looking at prior time. I mean, Pre, like more previous 30 days time frames, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see back if it's snowballing, and it is, okay? And obviously that makes sense because I read the analytics that Pinterest analytics to you for clicks, and you can see it growing, okay? So anyway, um, so that's how much traffic I get currently. And then I wrote the number down, or did I? No, I didn't. Hold on. Let me get my website and tell you how much people purchase and 
I don't mind telling you how much money I made from it. Again, it's all it's all relative because if you have a better not better business than me, if you have a a more Pinterest Pinterestier business than me, um, you could probably have better stats. Meaning, if you sell in wedding, like you know, there's certain ones that do much better, um, and you have much more sales than me. It will just depend. So, hold on. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. All right. I'm just filtering. I have a, and I know people came from Pinterest who purchased because I asked them during checkout, how did you hear about us? And they could select the Pinterest um, button, drop down button. Um, so let me just count really quick. Oh, the total is here. Okay. So 24 people have purchased from me since the last date was October 25th. Okay, now that does not include January. Okay, I stopped my Pinterest strategy for the month of January. Um, I'll actually tell you just, I'll, I'll just explain to you why. I didn't stop it on purpose. The credit card that led to my board booster account was canceled, and I didn't know that, that it linked to my board booster account. And by the time I realized it, a month has passed, and I put in the new credit card. So, so pretty much January didn't have any sales from Pinterest because I stopped my Pinterest strategy in January by accident. Okay. So anyway, 24 sales. And then let me just do the quick addition here for how much the total sales are. One second. And I'm not looking at you guys. I'm looking at my screen. So if it looks weird, that's what I'm doing because <laughs> I'm adding each of the set, each of the dollar amounts. And again, this doesn't, honestly, I could tell you the number and it doesn't really matter because if you sell, you know, lower price products um, or more expensive products or blah, blah, blah products, this number could vary, okay? Oh, I'm just adding here. I'm adding, so, so really, while I know that it can vary per person, hold on, let me not lose my place. While I know it could vary per person depending on the market that you're in, I'm, really, I'm still telling you this number to inspire you because I haven't touched my Pinterest account since October, sometime in October, um, and these are all the sales I got from it because of the things I implemented. So exam, So free traffic. So traffic, I, I didn't do anything for, right? I mean, I did something, then I stopped doing something for it. Like, I don't have to work on it anymore. I'm getting sales. Um, oh, that's a very particular number. Okay, so never mind my ugly calculator. <laughs> Hold on, let me get you guys on Facebook Live again. Okay, so don't judge my ugly calculator. So I added um, all the sales I received. Um, and pretty much $1,600 from Pinterest since October, not including um, January numbers, okay? Because uh, my my credit card was funny. My my thing my my board my account was not working at that time. Okay, let's just call it like how it is. Okay. So anyway, so this is just to inspire you. Does that mean you're gonna make fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars? No. Does that mean you make more or less? Yes. What I'm trying to show you is that I have made this much money from Pinterest. Okay without doing anything during that time frame I made the money, okay? Before that time frame, yes, I implemented my strategies, blah, 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 right? And it's such a snowball, such a snowball, such a snowball, okay? But after that, I did nothing, okay? And so this income was made passively. Now, I don't know if you're behind this screen being impressed or not. That's not my business. You can be impressed or you don't have to be. It's up to you. I'm impressed with the fact that I made this passively, that I did not have to do anything during, let's just call it end of October, because October 25th till now, I made that money without having to work on it. Then I think to myself, I'm impressed because in the future, when that traffic starts to snowball even more, um, we're in March now. So let's just say a year from now, okay, so one full year, I could probably bet my life on it. That's a little extreme, but you get the point that this number will be higher because of the snowballing effect, okay, that more of my pins will be out in the world, more people will start to repin it, more people will start to go to my website. You get the point, right? You know what I'm saying how Pinterest works. And so 
that $1,600 in, I think it's like less than five months time. So five months, five months. Is, so I can't do the math right now, but the point is in another five months time it could be higher. And then in a year's time will be much more. And especially if it's going forward, right? You're not looking at the previous six months compared to the six months. You're looking forward because again, because of the snowballing strategy. And that's why I'm the most impressed with using Pinterest because it really is a passive way to get traffic and lead to sales. Let me read some interesting stats for you guys, okay? If you don't mind. Um, so it's from Pinterest, not from me. Pinterest um, released this. Let me um, put the link inside of the comments below um, so you can look at it yourself later. Don't leave the Facebook Live right now. Um, before I read the stats, let me just tell you, if you just joined me, Mastering Pinterest course launch is here for three days only today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Okay. And what that means is that after Thursday, the, the course will not be available for purchase temporarily. It will be out for a couple months. Okay. Um, I actually didn't explain to you guys why yet. Uh, I'll explain to you right now, I promise. But when it does eventually come back, it will be $50 more. So the price will go up. The free bonus templates will not be available anymore. Okay. It is, uh, it is something that you get for buying during the launch. Will I eventually bring it back? Eventually, maybe, but at this moment they're going away. Um, and then if you purchase today, okay, it doesn't matter if you purchase full price or payment plan, three month payment plan, you have an, a chance to win the free coaching session. I am gonna put all your names in a hat or a basket and then draw, okay? And again, like I said earlier, their chances of winning the coaching session, in my opinion, are high because a lot of you guys are, I mean, I thank you very much, are very loyal to me. And when I put out a course, most people that are, there's a loyal members of mine who will buy anything I create. And they, a lot of people already purchased the course when it got pre-sold a month and a half ago. Meaning, if I had to take a guess, there's not many people who are going to be buying during launch, especially not the first day, right? Because you have three days it spans out until. The point is, your chances of winning the, the coaching session are higher, okay? Because it's not like, hundreds of people buying the course, okay? A lot of people bought it during pre-sale. So if you want a chance to win the coaching session, buy today. All right, um, now let me explain to you before I go into the Pinterest stats why, um, why I uh, am taking away the course, okay? After this launch is done, so Thursday night it's done, Friday the course won't be available for purchase. For how long? I don't know exactly, at least a couple months in my opinion. Why? Because um, and I'm just being real with you. I I have a lot of members in this group and a lot of members in my private groups. Okay, um, that people who bought courses and I also run my own business. Not only do I own my business, I own an Etsy shop, two Etsy shops, an Amazon shop, a dot com. I mean, there's a lot going on. I have an email list. I have a lot going on. Okay. <coughs> While trying to build my e-commerce business, I'm also trying to manage helping you guys. You guys know it's a lot of work. I know you guys know that. And so the point is, um, I need to, I need to take, I need to, um, how do I say this? <coughs> I need to take this course off the market for a while to focus on my current students. Okay. And so what I'm trying to say is that each and every day people buy my courses. Okay. A lot of new members, old members, they buy, 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 buy. And, and that's great. Love the money. Okay. But that's not the perp. That's not my, my goal here. My, my goal of starting the handmade mastermind period was to help people. And so in order for me to help people, I have to make money from this venture. Obviously that's what I charge for courses. Right. But I have to stop for a little bit of selling these courses, particularly in this case, Pinterest, um, right after the launch, so I could focus on my current students. So if I, if I, for example, the opposite is leaving the course up, people keep purchasing, keep purchasing, keep purchasing. It is not ideal for me because if people, if new students keep coming in, keep coming in, keep coming in, the student base starts to grow, and it, I mean, it starts to become really out of control. So, so the point is, I'm a little overwhelmed, right? And so I need to put put away this course after launch for a while until I kind of catch up with things. Um, having said that, I will kind of give you a little hint to next week. Um, next week, I'm doing a fun Easter, um, I guess you would call it giveaway. I guess you would call it giveaway um, during the Facebook Live and has a lot to do with free things for you guys and 
um, some cool offers in, you know, kind of around the Easter holiday. Okay, so it's going to be fun. And so having said that, um, I'm probably going to be doing some special offers um, only for a few days next week regarding all my courses before I put them away. That special offer, by the way, is not including the Pinterest course. Literally after Thursday night, the Pinterest course goes away for a while. So next week when I do this fun thing for my other courses, it's not including the Pinterest course, FYI, okay? If you have any questions, comment down below, but I think I explained it. Let's go into these stats really quick. Um, I'm going to explain what some of these mean. Um, this is from Pinterest, okay? So they surveyed pinners um, to learn about how they shop on Pinterest, okay? Their answers show that Pinterest impacts what people buy and which brands they choose and how much they spend, okay? So where do pinners get ideas for what to buy? So if you are a pinner, right, so they only surveyed not just general people, but pinners, okay? And they asked them, where do you get ideas for what to buy? 60% of them said Pinterest, okay? That's a cool number, right? So something that you should be considering. 48% said search engines. You guys know I love SEO, which by the way, there's, in my Pinterest strategy, there is part SEO um, strategy, and there's another one that's not SEO. So I, I consider both of them. So it's really nice to see that search engines are part of um, how people decide what to buy, okay? 41% says friends and family, referrals, we know, we love that, and 35% says social media, okay? So it's really interesting to see Pinterest is 60%, social media is 35%, because some people tell me, that yeah, isn't Pinterest the same thing as social media? It really isn't. Nothing social about Pinterest, okay? The act of repinning people think is social. I'm definitely not commenting, nobody really comments on pins, um, but it really isn't. I mean, technically you could say it is, but it really isn't. It's a, it's a search engine, um, platform, okay? So to see search engine and Pinterest to be one of the top ways people get ideas for what to buy is um, certainly important, okay? Now, 72% say Pinterest inspires them to shop when they aren't actually looking for anything, okay? Um, which is really, how do I say this? Um, what's the word? Encouraging for us because you know, we, we also rely on not just having these pens show up in front of people's feeds, but people that maybe weren't looking for something. And maybe that got inspired by when they look at it. You guys ever saw a pen and go, oh my God, how cute, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. That's what this stat is relying on. People that weren't really looking for something, Pinterest inspired them to shop because of these type of pens. And this is why in the course, the free temple Temple. The free templates bundle I include during launch that won't be available after launch. This is really important because you want to make sure that your pins with your product photos look really enticing, okay? For that reason alone, okay? And also says here 70% of 70% discover new products on Pinterest. That's cool. That's a really cool one um, to uh, consider, okay? All right, so decision making 90% say Pinterest helps them decide what to purchase, all right? I think that's pretty straightforward. And again, these are pinners, okay? These people that are hanging out on Pinterest, okay? 78% say it's useful to see content from brands on Pinterest. Content, I'm assuming, I don't know exactly what this means, but that things besides product pins. And, and so you'll see that part of my strategy has to be, includes not just pinning your own products, or products in general, but printing actual content. There's a section in the course. You guys can click the link above if, if I haven't mentioned it already, bit.ly slash THM Pinterest course, and you can see the curriculum in there. Um, oops, where did my thing go? Oh. You can see the curriculum in there, and you will see that um, I teach a, I don't know what it's called, I teach a section that shows you how to pin the most, wait, what to pin for the most engagement, okay? And so the 70% that say it's useful to see content from brands on Pinterest, that means that type of stuff. Like, besides your own stuff, what other stuff creates the most engagement, okay? And so I have a, a little video section on that, all right? 66% buy something after seeing a brand's pins. That's cool, okay? Now, this is not considered, like, you know, this is not just straight facts. This is not considered if they come back later, if they don't. They buy somebody else's stuff, not yours. Like, so, you know, these stats are looking great. I think they are, by the way, but it's not, it's not like, like, oh, it's 60% this, but 
it doesn't it doesn't dive into it deeper. Um, and so these stats alone are great, but just understand there's like, you know, loopholes in these stats, okay? But nonetheless, it's still a great platform. Checking out. Proportionately, Pinterest drives more referral traffic to shopping sites than plot, social platforms do. We already knew this because of what I said earlier. Um, so if you check out the link I sent you in the comments, it shows the red bar of Pinterest being the highest, okay? And it shows Facebook. It's a smaller bar, and it says 33% more than Facebook. That's cool. 71% more than Snapchat. I probably assume that because of the type of customer that hangs out on Snapchat versus Pinterest, my opinion. Um, and 200% more than on Twitter. I don't believe if, – if, if anybody's here using Twitter for sales, then get off of it. Like, you just wasted your time, okay? And not just because it's a stat, because that's what I always tell people, and that's what I always knew, okay? Um, all right, and there's a few more stats you guys can check out on that link, okay? I'm not going to sit here and bore you with it. Um, okay, so am I missing any comments? No, perfect. Okay, guys, you guys still with me? I hope so. So those are really interesting stats. I do want to say a couple things before I end this call. I know I'm way, I'm way over the hour. Um, I'm, like 100, I'm like an hour and 20 minutes, okay? So I know I lost some of you. But I want you to understand that, you know, Building and driving traffic to website. In fact, I asked yesterday, if you win the free coaching session, what would you use it on? I'm not sure if you guys saw that post. Uh, different answers, different answers, but I saw quite a few similar regarding how to pretty much like make your website work for you. And what that means is not just building it, but driving traffic to it. And so, and there was, I have a couple of Facebook lives on that, but you know, this is one of the ways. This is one of the ways, and understand that this way is still long effect. So right now. The idea of website is very overwhelming. I get you. And driving traffic to it. I've seen somebody comment in a post that's not in our group that she complained about, I think it was, I think it was Etsy. I don't know. I forget. Um, and somebody's like, no, she complained about the profit margins. Okay. And I actually don't think it's because of Etsy's fault. I think because her price, her products are not priced well enough. But somebody said to her and replied to the comment and said, um, you should get your own website. You don't have to worry about something. I don't know, some type of fees. Oh, oh I didn't see that. And so I, I didn't write anything back, but I thought to myself, you absolutely have no idea what it takes, right? Because Etsy and Amazon provide that traffic for you, but you probably have to drive your own traffic. And, and guys, Pinterest is one of the ways, again, a passive way to drive the traffic, okay? A lot of invitations that came in yesterday. Wow. Okay. So is that a ZN division? Yes. Oh, I wonder if it was a... Mistake. It's Z and N are like on opposite, so um, I don't know. Okay. All right. Both look good. That's how she spells Cindy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> today's today's. Okay. Anyway, so uh, what was I saying? Um, yes, driving traffic to your website. A lot of people want to know how, and so here's the thing. You know, there's many different ways, and I I really encourage people to try the Pinterest thing, and here's why. Not more than anything. But because of when you, after you implement it, it becomes like free traffic. It becomes a very passive way. You know, when I work on email lists, like I just sent out an email for Easter. If you guys are on my first, you know, my e-commerce email list, you probably would have saw it. Um, I sent, I send out, I'm about to send out an email for what's coming up soon. I forget what's coming up soon. The point is, so it's a fairly active strategy, which is fine by me because it gives me a higher conversion. But I still want that passive strategy of Google SEO, of Pinterest, etc. And it takes time to build these. Every one of these, every one of these. So for anybody that tells you, yeah, screw Etsy, go on and get your own website. First of all, don't listen, don't listen to them in that manner. You guys get your own website, but you understand it's not that easy to say, screw Etsy, right? I'm going to go ahead and build my own website and get traffic. A million people to come to that website. It takes time to build this, and this is one of the ways. This is one of your answers, okay, um, to get it. And you're going to thank yourself in six months, et cetera. Like Angela thanked herself. For like she started an email list but didn't know what she was doing, and then she said she got my email list webinar, and by far it's growing. Okay, now just just for the record, let me just give you some insight here. Okay, just because somebody works on an email list or Pinterest, it doesn't mean ends up in sales. Let me explain why. This is like a little like listen up kind of thing. If you sell, this is a bad example. Hold on. If you sell personalized tumblers, okay, with, no, not personalized, like tumblers that are fun, trendy, 
but the trendy stuff on it is really outdated fonts or really outdated characters. Let's say unicorns are not a thing anymore. Let's just say, right? Might be a while, but still. You can have all the clicks and views from Pinterest, but nobody cares, okay? So while I teach you in this course, I'll look up above, how to, you know, work on your Pinterest strategy to, to, you know, get it to snowball and gain traffic, I don't teach you what to sell, right? That's up to you. So understand that there's that connect, that disconnect, really, if you don't get that in line. Um, so while you could be having some decent uh, traffic from Pinterest, if you don't connect with those viewers, those Pinterest viewers, by actually offering things that people want, you will not do so well. I'm not saying you would fail. I'm sure you'll get a sale or something, but you know what I'm saying? You'll get much more success if you had better products that meet people's needs. And in turn, I'm going to say something else on top of that, okay, that I don't teach you in the course particularly, is websites that convert. So if you're selling on, if you're selling on Etsy and Amazon and you're using your Pinterest strategy for Etsy and Amazon, great, no problem. You don't control those websites and how they work. But if you're selling from your own .com, if your .com is not, um, is not easy to navigate, is not professional looking, is not, you know what I'm saying, it doesn't help people convert, it's confusing, you know, fill in the blank, then, yeah, I could help you bring the traffic, but if you're not working on help people convert, then that's your problem, right? So consider those as a side thing, okay? But nonetheless, those can be worked on later. Getting your Pinterest strategy working for you now is really important. Okay, let me make sure I didn't miss any comments here. No, perfect. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you guys go because I took way too much of your time, um, way, way too much. It has been, like, flowing out and it keeps on talking and it just came natural. So... Let me just say a few things before I let you guys go, okay? bit.ly slash THM Pinterest course is the link. Um, I will be emailing everybody today later just to make sure people are reminded, and I put the link in the comments below right now so you can see it and click on it if you don't see it above, okay? And for three days only, so today, tomorrow, and Thursday, after that, the Pinterest course will not be available for sale, okay? It is going away. The price is $50 less right now. Eventually, when it does come back to market, it'll be $50 more, okay? Now, um, if you buy it during launch over the, three, the course of the three days, you will get the, um, the free bonus templates that I provided for you. It's a separate course for Pinterest, okay? After the launch, it will not be available, okay? And that will be added to your account when you purchase within 24 hours. I'll be adding it manually, okay? And that... It's pretty much really beautiful templates you could use to make this Pinterest strategy much easier on you, okay? Because everything I teach for you is very achievable, but some people, even with the tutorial I have within the course, that's for free, part of the course, teaching you how to make your own templates, you might still feel very um, not graphic designery, and you want something to do it for you. And they're, done, they're pretty much done for you, these templates, okay? And they won't be available after, after launch is done, okay? And again, if you purchase the course today, okay, tomorrow, I'll put everybody's name in a hat, we'll purchase, and we'll draw a free coaching session. That person has to use a coaching, coaching session within three months, so you still have some time, don't worry. Um, and that's it, okay? If there is no other questions, um, then I'll let you guys go. Oh, Catherine says, I'm still spinning up my business. Would it behoove me to start my Pinterest with other pins beforehand since I have free time. What do you mean, Catherine? What do you mean? Well, you know, I would say to you, um, in my Pinterest course, first of all, there's a lot to learn. So even before you start working on your business, if, I'm assuming by what you said, you're pretty much brand new to selling online. Um, it would be interest, it would be important for you to understand the strategy. And yes, you can set up you can set up your Pinterest account with other things besides you pinning. Um, the profile, um, the boards, and yes, there's other things you could be pinning in between. Um, I go into it more in the course, but, um, it, you know, it would partly, not all of it, be important to start it beforehand, but of course, you probably understand this part, a huge portion does rely on you having products, okay? But it doesn't hurt you starting before, okay? So then when you have your products up, et cetera, then you can start your strategy. Okay, and there are some boards I do recommend, particularly one that I think about immediately, that it would make sense completely to start um, even before you have products up, okay, if you want to get a head start. Okay, guys? All right, I'm going to let you guys go. 
I will, I'll probably do a Facebook Live tomorrow just to do the drawing um, and chat about the Pinterest course again, okay? Um, actually, hold on. Yeah, I'll probably do that because I want to make sure people see that I'm doing it live. So you don't have to be on the Facebook Live to see if you want, but it'll be drawn live, okay? You're welcome. Um, and that's it, okay, guys? I will catch you later. And if you have any questions, you can post in the group. Um, I'll, again, I'll be emailing you, sending Twitter alerts and all that stuff so people are aware of this launch that will end on Thursday night. Okay, guys, have a great day. Bye.